finally it is time for Jed and Cred to launch on Polygon. They both are launching today guys and before that the team also dropped in the updated white paper. So in this video we are going to run through an overview of the white paper and what it contains, what new things has Jetstar forayed into and what we can expect from this particular crypto project or a gaming company in the coming days, months and years as well. This is Mr. Aslan. Crypto education is my passion, guys. I'm not a financial advisor and this is definitely not financial advice. If you're new to my channel or you've been watching my content but still not subscribed to my channel, do hit the subscribe button because it's free of cost. This here is the white paper of Jetstar. Now there is an extensive content to go through so I'll be going ahead with only the key pointers and any more details that you would like to go ahead and read through link to the white paper will be provided in the description below. So the first section that you have is the introduction on what Jetstar Gaming is, what is its ecosystem, what are they planning to do in terms of the GameFi space or the Web3 area. So what Jetstar Gaming is majorly focused on right now is two things, gamers and esports. When it comes to gamers, they have a specific set of products that are catering to their needs and bringing them from Web2 to the Web3 platform. When it comes to esports, they are still operating on the Web2 platform, but slowly building a mechanism where Web3 forays into esports as well. Now, the key milestones area will give you the details of whatever Jetstar has done in the previous one year duration. You can see the amount of community growth. Sometime last year, August is when Jetstar actually launched. And in the month of November, where it was a crazy month for crypto, in fact, Jet did reach the top ATH of somewhere around 1.12-ish dollars. So it started at 0 0.301. That's the starting price of Jetstar. Would you imagine that? Silver Bolt beta launch also happened and that was also a few months back and now it's gearing up for the public launch. The best and most important part that Jetstar has is a casino license. Why? Because Jetstar is going ahead with its own gambling set of games. Now this might be on Silver Bolt or its gaming platform called Stardome. I have separately made videos for what Silver Bolt is and what Stardome is. Do check that out in the playlist. Now Genesis Mint that is your first SFTs on Polygon. Now these SFTs are kind of advanced NFTs I would say because they combine the fungible concept and the non-fungible concept together. As a one-liner what is an SFT? An SFT is an NFT wherein you have an option to change the attributes of the NFT itself. Then you have the Jetstar Gaming Guild and our four esports team. This was a very recent announcement I would say in fact the past one one and a half month duration is when we even got to know more details about their esports team and the Jetstar Gaming Guild. There was a community on Telegram which was brought over from Mobile Legends Bang Bang. That was a community strength of somewhere around 130,000 people. Apart from that, Jetstar also has forayed into esports. They have their own esports teams. They also did participate in the recent event at Bali too. An outreach program which is GamingForAll.gg. Now what is GamingForAll.gg? What does it ideally do? Now what exactly is Jetstar doing with the outreach program? It is going ahead and supporting and educating over 200 gamers and 12 schools. This is pretty cool because now that you have an esports team, you have a gaming community, you can always go ahead and spread the education, spread tactics, spread good practices of uh, how you can go ahead and improve yourself as a gamer or an esports player. Now moving on to what exactly is the business plan, you have crypto mass adoption through gaming, you have the gaming revenue model, adoption strategy, the marketing and advertising strategy, contributing to charities. Now I'm not going into details of all this stuff, you can just go ahead and give it a read because the information is pretty extensive. Then comes the partnerships. You can see Chainlink over here, who is the main partner right now, at least, who is working around with Jetstar regarding the SFTs. What Chainlink does is generate or take care of the generation of random attributes that need to be assigned to your SFTs every time you want to go ahead and shuffle them. And there is a marketing partner 
partnership also that Red Star has with Polygon and much more to be announced in the coming days I suppose. Now Red Star has also secured partnership with one of the leading TV broadcasters which is Dense.TV in Indonesia. That is pretty huge in my opinion guys because Red Star into esports and Red Star getting exclusive interviews or their matches being aired on these specific TVs might propel Red Star in terms of both advertisement and reach to a lot many people out there. Last but not least, Skill Gaming. Well, Skill Gaming has been part of Jetstar since the early days. Skill Gaming did help in development of the Stardome platform and also create certain games for Jetstar. Now, let's head over to the tokenomics section. There are some changes as opposed to what we saw in the light paper, the tokenomics for Jet. The launch price will be 10 cents. Now, the total supply is 1 billion. However, the circulating supply will be 55 million owing to the previous supply that it existed in the liquidity pool. Even though the supply is ramped up, the total supply is ramped up by 10x. Earlier, it was just 100 million. Now, it is 1 billion. No need to worry over here in terms of the supply aspect the main reason here being the entire supply of 1 billion will not be available at all at the initial stage it will start at 55 million and gradually the supply will be slowly induced as and when required now how the generation happens is only through two methods one the minting happens through the liquidity program else it would be minted by the team for providing liquidity on the kexes now if there is a listing on the kex is when the additional tokens would be minted those tokens would be added as a liquidity pool on the kex else the liquidity rewards is when you will be minting the token there is another option that also adds up to keeping the supply in check that is the true burn and the buyback and burn now the true burn ensures that the tokens are taken off from the total supply itself now we have all seen tokens which are sent to the burn wallet that is one way of burning or trying to reduce the supply. Ideally, you are just locking them up in a dead wallet. However, this true burn feature is pretty unique. Apart from the true burn, you also have the buyback and burn mechanisms wherein the team will be going ahead and purchasing the tokens in the open market and send them to the burn wallet through which you will also see a reduction in the supply. Now with Jed specifically, it is a DeFi token. So it is majorly meant to earn a passive income in the long run. Everyone initially thought that the liquidity would be provided with Matic for Jed. However, there is a twist in the plot. The initial exclusivity, you will need Cred to purchase Jed on Uniswap. This is a temporary aspect. It is not permanent and this will remain until the liquidity pool reward program starts. Now, until that particular liquidity program begins, you will have liquidity pairing from the team only between Jed and cred tokens now why this was done what is the strategy behind it this is something that we will have to just wait and watch and there is also a vc that is happening in a few hours near to the launch where the team is going to just go ahead and clarify certain aspects of why they took this particular path this is totally new from regular tokens that we ideally see because maximum amount of tokens that i have seen in many of the projects do not have a closed loop ecosystem by a closed loop ecosystem i mean pairing between their own native tokens they usually do that with the on-chain token, be it ETH, be it Matic or be it Solana or etc etc based on the blockchain that you want to go ahead and launch. However, this is pretty different. I am both a little amazed as well as a little curious as to understand how this entire mechanism is going to perform. Let's just wait and watch. Moving on to the features of Jet itself, you do have the Jet membership also coming up. Now, Jet membership is some kind of an additional bonus that you would be getting some exclusive stuff that as a holder you can obtain by following certain guidelines. Now, what are those guidelines? How this Jet membership operates? We will just have to wait and see because it's still yet to be launched in February of 2023. And certain perks, I believe, are pretty good. Like, especially if you look at the aspect of access to unique digital assets such as nfts and profile pictures pfps for profile picture now access to discounts with major gaming brands these two aspects is something which is a little intriguing for me now the true burn mechanism like i mentioned earlier it's there the tax-free buys and sells 
Now this is pretty cool because as the launch be benefit or a bonus, the team is offering a tax-free buy and sell for Jed till 15th of January. Now after 15th of January, there will be a 5% tax on Jed token, 2% tax will be a true burn, whereas the 3% tax will be sent back to the deployer wallet and will be distributed to the rewards pool for upcoming lottery program. Now coming down to credit tokenomics, you have the launch price starting at 0.50 and 8. Now this was the price at which the liquidity was taken out on the BSC chain so they are going to launch at the same price. The total supply again here would be 10 trillion however the circulating supply would be just 500 billion tokens and again the contract is special because it has a minting contract over here as well. So you will not have the entire supply of 10 trillion at the initial stage itself. It will start off at 500 billion again as and when required the minting of cred will occur. Features of cred would be the same. It has true burn, it has the buyback and burn mechanism as well so that it keeps in check on the supply front. Cred will be the universal currency that you can utilize across the entire ecosystem of Jetstar. So when Jet acts as a DeFi token, cred acts as an actual currency. Now this currency can be in-game, this currency can be utilized to go ahead and purchase SFTs or NFTs on Agora marketplace. This currency can also be utilized for betting on the Stardome platform in certain gambling games. The program that everyone was actually eagerly waiting for, Star Staking. Now Star Staking has a little bit of change or modification as compared to what was showcased on the light paper. Not too much of a deviation I would say, but some kind of a change that has occurred in terms of how Star Staking operates. The team has run multiple simulations in terms of ensuring the sustainability of the star staking platform. You can always go ahead and give a ridiculous amount of AP buys or APRs or also go ahead and add a big amount of token pool to the reward section in any staking program. However, how good is it if the staking pool only gives you that much amount of rewards for a short period of say 3 months or 6 months and after which it becomes kind of non-sustainable so the staking itself is non-profitable for any one who comes in later on. So the team has went through and decided to have a sustainable long-term staking reward program and that's where you have seasons coming in. So star staking will have its own kind of seasons wherein each season will have a capping of maximum jet staked thereby ensuring the long-term stability and sustainability of the program. Now once the season is at total capacity a new season will be launched once the transactional volume of either jet or cred passes a certain threshold determined when the season is filled. Now with the first season that is going to kick off pretty soon because star staking is going to launch after the tokens are launched probably this week sometime. So for season 1, the maximum amount of Jed that can be staked will be limited to 10 million tokens. Now 10 million is the total overall irrespective of the amount of people or wallets staking it. So it can be 100 wallets with 10,000 Jed or it can even be just one wallet, uh, 10 wallets with 1 million Jed. Depends. However, the total volume of JED tokens that would be existing in the staking pool would be 10 million tokens. Now, this will be equivalent to a total volume locked of around $1 million, again taking at the price point of 0.1 US dollars. That's the launch price. Now, you do have different APYs that are given out for the number of days that you want to go ahead and stake your JED. And also make note that there is a minimum amount of JED tokens that you need to have to be eligible to participate in the star staking program. So it starts with a thousand tokens for 30 days and goes all the way up to 500,000 tokens for triple nine, that's around a thousand days. Now star staking as a program is also pretty much interesting because it not only contributes to giving a utility to JET token and also providing a passive income, but in fact, it helps in the cred burn as well. During season one, cred will also go through a true burn rate of six cred per JED staked. So for example, if I take a total of 10 million JED tokens that are staked, so that means that 60 million tokens are taken off the entire total supply of cred. Now 60% of your rewards would be available for withdrawal at staking unlock, while the remaining 40% will be available 180 days later. 
Next, you do have the liquidity rewards program, which is also pretty cool. Many people are actually going ahead and doing this from quite some time. You as a user can go ahead and provide liquidity wherein the trading would happen in open market. And based on that, you would be receiving a certain amount of rewards. Now, Uniswap by default is actually going ahead and providing you 0.3% of transaction fee for every swap that happens, which utilizes your liquidity pool. This is directly from Uniswap. That is one set of rewards. However, Jet Team will also be going ahead and incentivizing you for providing the liquidity. What are those rewards? More details will be followed as and when we near the launch of liquidity rewards program. Now, this utility is pretty interesting because the lottery programs are only available for star staking and liquidity rewards providers. I personally really like the way that they have designed the lottery program because it is not something that is additionally put in or allocated as a fund. However, this will be an ongoing generative fund that happens through the normal transactions that occur whenever you purchase, anytime you purchase JET or CRED or anytime that is minted on the contract, a portion of it will be going ahead to the rewards pool. And since this will provide a self-sustaining mechanism, once the transaction volume kicks in in terms of both JET and CRED, the rewards pool for the lottery would go pretty high. Now this is it about the tokenomics and the reward programs that Jetstar has. But there is one final thing that I actually want to go ahead and showcase. Now what is KD Arena? Well KDA that has its own significance in the game space. KDA ideally stands for Kill, Death and Assist. So that's a short form that gamers use. Uh, so KDArena.gg will be the esports platform. Now there are some pretty big things that are planned for kdarena.gg and some of the details that Josh has let go right now on the telegram group. If you hold a SFT with you, you could essentially act as a manager or own your own esports team through a franchisee from Jetstar. How cool would that be? How it all works, what are the economics behind it and what are the details and the legalities involved. More such details will be shared as and when the days pass by. However, there is a separate white paper that is completely designed for KD Arena alone. I will probably cover this in a separate video as it's pretty extensive there as well. But if you are interested in checking, the link is available over here. Next, you do have Silverbolt, which is a proprietary app of Jetstar, which allows gamers to charge their phone, earn volts, participate in auctions and get free in-game assets or gaming hardware. I personally have won a Razer mouse. I have also won Razer Gold pins, which I have utilized to purchase a software as well as a few game assets. Diablo Immortal is something that I was playing quite a lot and all the orbs that I have got in that game is completely from Silver Bolt, which I did not even pay a single penny. Completely free. All I did was just charge my phone. Pretty cool. And this is a revolutionary app in my personal opinion. Do check that out if you're new to what Silver Bolt is. Now, when it comes to Stardome, Stardome is kind of a platform which Jetstar is building for indie developers as well as their own games. It is a platform that has two different aspects. One would be having a lot of hyper casual games where you can just go ahead and bet against your friends or other community members for cred and earn it as well if you want to go ahead and challenge them and beat them in the game. And these games are ideally built by skill gaming. Later on, it would also be opened up for indie developers. On the second part, Jetstar's own two franchise games, which are the CCG and MMORPG, will also be released through Stardome. Currently, Stardome is running in the beta version or I would say pre-beta version. It has a few casual games and the community members did have a chance to go ahead and experiment with the cred on the BSC chain, which was kind of null or void. Uh, so you could use that cred to go ahead and bet. It all worked pretty well and there are certain tweaks that are happening in the back end right now until a full fledged site will be up and running pretty soon. So once that's up, that's another utility added for the cred token. Now this kind of summarizes my overview of the white paper. Well, that was a pretty extensive white paper I would say. The key takeaways that I have from the white paper are one, the way that Jetstar has evolved itself from the past year of being just a crypto project started off with just saying okay we are going to be a game five crypto project but now they have evolved and forayed into esports and they are building certain tools which are kind of 
pretty much revolutionary in my opinion as well as they are having the first mover advantage which will definitely help them in the longer run. Jetstar is majorly focused on bringing the web 2 gamers to the web 3 platform so through adoption is where they want to succeed. The second being the tokenomics itself, Jet and Cred both are now mintable contracts. That means only if required will the supply be minted else whatever is the actual circulating supply will remain as it is. The concept of true burn and buyback burn will always help reduce the actual supply in a true deflationary manner. Especially the true burn which takes off the tokens from the total supply itself will ideally mean that the scarcity of the tokens will slowly be increasing as and in when days pass by and we have some pretty good volume once listed on Kexus. Jetstar also has made a little bit of tweak to the star staking platform which gives you a good reward for holding your jet and staking it. However, also ensures the stability and the sustainability of the platform itself for a long term. The liquidity rewards program is also pretty cool in my opinion because you can go ahead and provide liquidity on Uniswap. You do get some amount of rewards through Uniswap directly, the 0.3% of transaction fees. But apart from that, since you're providing it through Jetstar, more details to flow through in the coming days, you would also be given additional incentives. You still have more rewards coming your way. The lottery rewards are built for only those who are staking their tokens on the star staking program or providing liquidity on the liquidity rewards program. Finally, you do have kdarena.gg. kdarena.gg has massive benefits for people who want to pour into esports. And last but not the least, Silvervolt and Stardome. I've been doing it and using Silvervolt for quite some time. Many of the people in the community have won. I've also done an unboxing video of me winning a Razor Mouse. You can go ahead and check that out in the playlist as well. Apart from that, Stardome, well, it's a game platform. Much more to come for Stardome as it evolves as and when the days goes by. Right now, it's just having a lot of hyper casual games wherein you can challenge your friends or compete yourself with others for cred. Now, since Jetstar has a casino license, many gambling games would also follow. Silverbolt will also be getting its own version of lottery and poker coming as well. Watch out for more updates from the Jetstar team. This is it for this video guys, Mr. Aslan signing off. Hope this video was helpful in terms of understanding what the white paper is. Let me be very frank, it's really, really extensive. I would say a good one, one and a half hour read to understand all what Jetstar is actually doing and the concepts of how they have built their ecosystem. Now I will be going ahead and doing other videos which are breakdowns of certain aspects in the white paper which I feel should be given a lot more detailed importance. Thank you so much for watching guys, meet you in the next video. Have fun, take care, ciao.